Good morning and welcome to St. Bernadette's Missionary Discipleship Union. Today is the third Sunday of Easter. Please air high five, wave, or smile to your neighbor. We ask that you please wear your mask and maintain social distancing at all times, as well as silence your phone and prepare your heart to celebrate this sacred liturgy. Today, let us be like the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Let our hearts burn within us as we hear the gospel and celebrate the Eucharist. Our celebrant this morning is Father John Peter. Please stand. Their hearts were filled with so much love. And today, as we gather here, breaking up this bread, ready to listen to the scripture reading, the Lord also is ready to open our hearts. And so let's acknowledge our sins and pray. I confess to Almighty God. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. I have been gracious to me.
let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, and renew the youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our redemption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated in this Mass. We continue to pray for the end of this pandemic and we also pray for all those who are fighting fatal disease like cancer. And we pray for the faithful departed, Annie Croft and Clarita, his hope. And we, today we have a, a apostolic communion and a confirmation of Marcus and also a birthday of a um, 10 years old grandparent. A reading from the Act of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom he handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, and that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because the ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still in perilous of joy and, and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. I want to thank you and welcome you all to this Eucharistic celebration on the third Sunday of Easter uh, season. I'm so happy to welcome, uh, officially welcome many of you, uh, you know, joining for the first time after a long, long time. I know for sure you have been longing and you have been missing this opportunity as sisters and brothers come together to celebrate the worship and to give thanks to God in this house of God and house of prayer. 
Whereas now we have, you know, receiving vaccine and being, um, you know, uh, being in a safe zone, you get the comfort to join together. So I want to welcome you and thank you for being here. We shall continue to worship the Lord. And as we just heard the scripture reading, it is so profound. Jesus walked into the, into the midst of the disciples and he gave them his peace. Peace be with you. After all that had happened, betrayal, denial, just abandoned, brutal death, and then burial. Disciples kind of shame. They didn't want to see each other. They didn't want to face each other. They cannot, they cannot, they cannot stand to each other. What they have done, what a chaos, chaotic situation that they have to face. But once they realize their mistake, they're coming closer to each other. They stayed one together in the room, in the upper room. They were able to see God. They have heard Jesus rose from the dead. He appeared to Mary and appeared to the disciples. He appeared to the two disciples on the way to Emmaus at the breaking of the bread. But we have not seen. That's what they have been thinking. But today, everyone had an opportunity. Jesus appeared in, in the midst of them and showed them his wounds. He showed them his wounds, touch and see and feel that I am here. I am resurrected. I am the Son of God, the Messiah, who has been prophesied for generation to generation from Moses, Abraham, Moses, and to David, and finally through the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Joseph, I was I was brought into this world. It is the will of God. It is the will of God. I was born in this way. I lived in this way. I die in this way. And I'm resurrected. So sisters and brothers, the first message that you want to receive from the scripture reading, it is about the fulfillment. The fulfillment in Christ. New Testament is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. All the prophecies, all the prophets, all the good work that the Lord did, it is to fulfill, you know, Christ, the Son of God. That's why, you know, New Testament is the fulfillment of the Old Testament and Jesus is the fulfillment. And we heard that several times today. In order that the scripture may be fulfilled. In order that the will of God be fulfilled. So we hear that over and over again. The second one that I wanted to share with you today, the Lord goes into the midst of the disciples after all of these things happen. The first and most important thing that Jesus wants to share with them is peace. May peace be with you. Imagine if these things could have happened to us, we would try to take a revenge or, you know, we will give back and we will show them who they are, who we are, that kind of thing. But Jesus knew their hearts. Jesus knew they are broken. Jesus knew what will bring them together, what will give them hope. That's why he says over and over again, peace be with you. Be at peace. I know for sure in our culture, we always have the custom of saying, hi, good morning, hi, how are you? And if you get to know more and you go, I love you, that kind of thing. But I think we need to add another Another saying to our life every day, peace be with you. When you wake up, when you go to bed, I think every single one in the household have to say to each other. But I know for sure, many of us do not go to, to, go to bed without peace in our heart. You go with a heavy heart. I wish everybody today, that's why in the Catholic tradition, we have an examination of conscience before you go to bed. Make an examination of conscience. Have peace with God and have peace with your family. Have peace with yourself. 
That's another reason every time you come to church, you know, we celebrate, begin the Mass after we acknowledge the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The next thing that we do is the peace be with you. It takes us back to the Easter resurrection time, the peace that the Lord provided upon this day, which reminds me about the Sabbath day when the disciples gathered together and Jesus appeared to them. When they were scattered, they could not see the presence of God. But when they gathered together, they were. That's why the church emphasizes on the Sunday celebration. I know for sure we still get you a know, pandemic and all kinds of health issues and we still have dispensation. But at the same time, within our hearts, the fire of love that burns together for God and for the house of God and for the house of prayer. That's why the Sabbath day, Sunday, is such a sacred day in the life of Catholics and Christians. Again, that's peace that comes to us through the worship, through as we gather in the name of God. God comes to give us the peace. But please allow me to share with you two more important things that we want to reflect is about the wounds of Christ and the witness. Jesus appears to them. Why are you troubled? Why questions arise in your heart? Look at me. Touch. See my hands. Look at my feet. And look at my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. Prophet Isaiah spoke about the suffering servant of God and he says he bore our infirmities. Jesus had these wounds, he has to take these wounds in order to fulfill God's will, in order to save the people, in order to bring all the scriptures into fulfillment, that the Lord will come and save his people. And he showed upon the cross, Father forgive them, they know not what they do. And in today's scripture, it's been repeated over and over again. Father, forgive them. Forgive us of sins. Reconciliation. Mercy of the Lord is being repeated. The wounds of Christ is not to make another wound. It is to share the peace and mercy of God. The wound of Christ is not selfish. It is selfless. The wounds of Christ is out of love and it is unlimited. The wound of Christ is not for the sake of Christ, it is for the sake of God's creation, especially the humanity, God's begotten children, that's you and me. That's why today Jesus is showing the wounds. I want to ask you to take a pause and ask yourself, what are some of the wounds that you carry in your heart? for your family, for yourself. Ask yourself, is it out of selfishness or it is out of selflessness? Is it just, I want it, that's why I'm going through this pain? Or it is because my family, my household, my community, why do I have to suffer? In this pandemic time, we all have the opportunity to carry this wound of pandemic. None of us are you know, cause of this, but this has been given to us as a wound. How do we carry this? Blaming, betraying, denying, hating, resentfulness. We could go that path, but our God did not show us that path. God showed us the victory. God showed us the, the hope. God showed us the way of resilience. That is the wound that Christ is showing to his disciples. And it is true, the fearful, coward, disciples, hiding, running away, now became our friend in the front line, talking about Christ, the Son of God, whom you killed, rose from the dead, and we are witnesses. We saw him, we touched him, we ate with him, and we are ready to die for him. That's what the wound of Christ made an impact in the life of the disciples. And so I want to ask you, as you are thinking about the wounds that you are going through as a husband, as a wife, as a single, as a grandpa, as a grandma, as children, you are all going through so much wounds. 
because you're losing so many things in this time. Maybe you can consider this as a wound, but transform, allow that wound to the wound of Christ so that you can be transformed into joy, into hope, into love, into tranquility. That's what Jesus did in the life of the disciples. That is why you and I are still following Christ. And the last one, sisters and brothers, you and I are called to, you know, become witness. Witnesses of Christ and His love and His sacrifice that He offered for us. We do that not because it is easy. We do that not because we see everything. We see that because it is comfortable. No, not at all. We go beyond. We go beyond. The love of a mother, love of a father goes beyond. So I want to encourage you sisters and brothers, try your best this week to share the peace, nothing but the peace to your household. I know for sure there are so much wounds in your heart that you carry every day. So many ways that, you know, people cause these wounds. Sometimes we also become the cause of the wounds. We need to heal ourselves and we need to heal others. And that, we, that makes us to become witness of Christ. I'll just end with a little, little uh, you know, story that I read a long time ago. It is a real story that happened in the life of an 80 years old, young in heart. Man walked into the doctor's office, his appointment is 8.30. Walks into the office like 7.30 a.m. already. It's already busy, you know, office. Too many doctors. But this man was so, you know, in a hurry. So his appointment is 8.30, 8 but he's already in a hurry. So another doctor was talking, so, you know, agitated or being in a hurry. She so approached him, how can I help you? When, what time is your appointment? Well, my appointment is 8.30, but I have to go somewhere at 9 o'clock. I have another appointment. Oh, okay. I'm free for the next 15 minutes. He said, okay, I can take you? Sure. So, what the appointment for him was, he got hurt, so he had some stitches that has to be removed on that day. That's why he came to the doctor's office. Okay, that's easy. I can do it. I can take it off and then, you know, uh, put some band-aid and it should be okay. I can do the dressing. Well, as they were doing the dressing, the doctor asked, may I ask you, why are you so agitated? Why are you in a hurry? Well, I said, I have an appointment. I have an appointment with my wife. Oh, okay. And what is the appointment for? Well, to have breakfast. Oh, wow. Love your wife so much, huh? Yes, I do. But she is Alzheimer's. It's been three years. She forgot everything. She does not know anything what is happening. She forgot me. She doesn't know me. She doesn't recognize me anymore. And then the doctor goes, and you still want to be there at nine o'clock. And then the husband said, of course, she does not know me, but I know who she is. She does not recognize me, but I do recognize her. I know how much she loved me, how much she cared for me, and I made this promise and commitment to be with her in this time. I want to begin my day with her every single day as long as I am alive, as long as she is alive, because the love that we had was such precious and beautiful. Sisters and brothers, it's the same love that Christ shared with the disciples who are broken hearted brokenhearted and when Christ shared the peace with the disciples, their life changed. When this 80 years old man was sharing his love story, his commitment to his wife, the doctor just melted. Sisters and brothers, it is your turn and my turn to become the witness of Christ because we have received the peace of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Talking about wounds, another wound. 
We stand for the praise. I do have one God, Father of my mind, and your creator, upon the invisible and invisible. I do have the one Lord of Jesus Christ's life, so that you are not Son of God, born of God before all ages, God from God, life from life, to God from to God, begotten not made, consubstantial to the God of to him and all in his name, for us in any part of salvation, to keep the account of heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, for the seven hundred and thirty years, and the Amen. For our days, he was crucified and was final. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, to the Lord of Jesus the Scriptures. He has sent him to heaven, and she said, I'm right now. He will come again, glory to our eyes to the living dead, and his kingdom will have a man. I have been in the Holy Spirit, and the Lord will give you my life, who proceeds to the Father and Son, who in the Father and Son and the Lord will give you my life, and who has spoken to the prophets. I have been able to come on the Holy Spirit, and I have been able to come on the Holy Spirit, and I have been able to come on the Holy Spirit, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord of the Lord. Amen. We turn now to God, our loving Father, who exists in all ages, whose promises never go unfulfilled. In hope, we offer these prayers. For the church that we may become evermore witnesses to Christ's love and resurrection. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For a just distribution of the earth's resources and for a greater commitment to the dignity of all, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For all who do not have enough to eat, that they may be filled by God's grace and our action, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, that we might rejoice in the presence of the resurrected Christ, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayers. For the end of the COVID-19 pandemic, and that all sick may be filled with God's grace, receive healing, and be surrounded by a supportive and loving community, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayers. For the dearly departed, especially for Annie Croft, Margarita Nikki. Kevin Rodrigo, Leonilla Alberto, Clarita Crispo, for whom this Mass is offered, may the good Lord grant them mercy, forgiveness, and full blessings in heaven. We pray to the Lord. The Lord be our prayer. For Marcus Mayoya, for receiving his first Holy Communion and Confirmation, we pray to the Lord. The Lord be our prayer. For Brent Barron, who is celebrating his 10th birthday, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our personal intentions, let us pray. Good and gracious God, we bless and thank you for this moment. As sisters and brothers, we are able to lift our hearts in prayer for us, for our community, and for our world, especially for our loved ones. Accept the prayers we have outspoken and all that we hold in our hearts. May all of this be granted unto us according to your divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. This time I want to let you know we will not be having a regular offertory collection by the address. Your sacrificial offerings are, you know, very essential for us. We have an uh, offertory box in each corner, or any usher would be more than happy to help you in this time. We encourage you to go online because that helps us a lot, and uh, it's a safe, we a secure way to offer your sacrificial donations. And may God continue to bless you and appreciate your generosity.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received this bread. We offer you gift of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Through the divine work of human hands, it will become for us a spiritual gift. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such a great gladness, grant also that the gift we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. At all times, God, claim me, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us. But defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are claimed. So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, that your sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the night he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He gave me thanks said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was entered into the chalice, giving you thanks and a blessing, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. Especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles. Saint Joseph, Saint Bernadette of Patroness, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the world. Be pleased to conform in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Myron, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, the merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind of witness to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, the body of Christ, people stay for eternal.
let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant that we pray that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to let you know last week we announced that there is a uh, VRX uh, clinic who was willing to offer us um, on-site vaccine, um, you know, distribution over here in our parking lot with the mask. And some of you have uh, made a call, and uh, we found out from the diocese there are some certain safety rules and um, unavoidable in circumstances we have to cancel over here. But then this uh, clinic itself has a website, and they are encouraging you to find the best time for you to go and receive your vaccine. We truly apologize for any inconvenience. We just wanted to promote more people to receive vaccine. That was our goal, but you know, we need to take care of certain other uh, stuff as well. Thank you for your understanding. And I appreciate your presence here. Many of you are able to join. May the Lord God bless you. The Lord be with you. And Almighty God bless us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the love of Christ to be merciful like the Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.